Hey, what's up guys? All right, so today's episode is pretty much squarely about the Rogan Packman episode uh, to remind you in the off chance you haven't looked at that yet. Um, as I always say with these particular videos, you probably wanna look at the text uh, before we talk about it because otherwise this won't make really any sense. The other thing I wanna remind you about though with that episode in particular, the full episode I think is like right around three hours or something like that. Uh, obviously I'm not asking you to watch and or listen to that. Uh, so I give you timestamps on the syllabus. They may also be on the prompt. I'm not as sure, but they're, they're absolutely on the syllabus, which you should be using. Some of you still aren't using the syllabus. Uh, you should do that. Anyway, it comes to like right at half an hour um, of the episode if you follow the timestamps on the syllabus. So please, please, please use those. Okay, anyway, what we're looking at today is uh, a podcast episode. It's filmed. Not all podcasts are uh, historically. That feels like a weird thing to say because podcasts are only like 12 years old anyway or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but more and more these days, uh, they'll have a, a video component. So immediately, and I, I'm going to start this episode, uh, by the way, video episode, ah, call it what you want. I'm going to start this uh, by actually drawing some comparisons between uh, the Roman and Pac-Man episode and the Last Week Tonight episode that we watched. So I would hope that some of those differences are immediately apparent, right? Like, they're similar in some ways. Um, they're both talking about related material that was on purpose. You know, I chose texts that cover similar ground. Uh, both are funny at times, at least a little bit, or they're discussing comedy, especially the Rogan episode. He's a stand-up comedian, so he's one of his interests is stand-up comedy, and he's and he's uh, or comedy in general. So he's talking a little bit about that with Pacman. Um, <clears throat> they both have video components, as I mentioned. Um, but even starting there, those video components are very different, right? A as they should be. But again, this is part of the point I want to make here uh, to extend the conversation we started last time about critique, about what's fair if you're going to be fair to a text. So, for instance. In the John Oliver uh, episode, that's meant to be filmed, um, like it's in front of a studio audience, you can hear them occasionally, uh, he's speaking to a camera, um, you get the sense that it's scripted, like it's live, first of all, they shoot the thing live, but they obviously rehearse, they obviously figure out, you know, they, they have graphics, and they have all this stuff that is, um, oh, how should I put it? Uh, it's sort of all the material you would expect from a TV show. I'm gonna move over here because that light's killing me. Bouncing off the house across the street. So, uh, But it's all the stuff you would expect from a TV show, right? Um, like it would be weird, for instance, even though this is filmed, it'd be weird if all of a sudden I was like, ha, ah, and had like graphics over here. Like that would be strange. That would be unexpected. It wouldn't fit the expectations, the criteria we have for this format. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and so as such, first of all, it's fair to talk about those elements <clears throat> um, in the last week tonight episode. It's probably not fair. I'll see students do something like this occasionally. Like sometimes they'll take issue with the way that he's dressed, uh, John Oliver, the way that he's dressed, something like that, because he's in a suit. They're like, ah, he's too stuffy or too formal or whatever. And it's like, Again, given the format, I think that happened. Like, like it's fair to actually expect someone to look like that on a show like that. Do you see what I'm saying? So it, it strikes me as unfair to knock him for it. If anything, he's just meeting uh, expectations in that regard, right? On the flip side, the Joe Rogan episode, um, <clears throat> is also filmed but you get the sense that it's um, it's almost filmed. I mean, it is filmed like from the side, right? Which is to say that the video component is not the primary concern, right? Like it's more about uh, hearing it because it is a podcast. And it's like, if you want to watch it, you can, right? But that's an option. It's not um, sort of, again, the primary objective or the primary means of communication. Uh, in that format, right? Here again, we bring uh, different expectations 
to something like that. So for instance, uh, in the episode, like Pac-Man has like a collared shirt, but it's not, it's not as formal as what John Oliver's wearing. Uh, Joe Rogan is wearing a t-shirt and I'm using my memory right now, but I think a hat maybe because he's bald. Um, <clears throat> he just looks like a dude. Do you know what I mean? Um, but here again, according to what I would argue are the vif ugh, very different standards we have for podcasts as opposed to TV shows, that makes sense. It would be weirder if they were dressed up to the extent that John Oliver is, just like it would be weirder if John Oliver was behind that big desk in just like a t-shirt and jean, you know what I mean? Like, so so again, part of you, uh, what you have to consider when it comes down to uh, your critique and whatever, whatever episode you choose, you first have to think about what is the given medium? You know, is it a TV show that airs on HBO, which is John Oliver, or is it a podcast that you know, Joe Rogan's on Spotify right now, but actually this episode's a couple years old. Uh, originally, it was just on YouTube. It was just on YouTube, which of course they're talking about in that episode. <clears throat> Some of you have videos on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? So it's not it's not HBO. It's, it's, it's different. And as a result, uh, again, if we're going to be as fair to the text as we can, we have to acknowledge those differences uh, in our thought process, in our critiques. Okay. All right. Let's get a little more into uh, the Rogan episode in particular. This one uh, can be a little more difficult uh, specifically because it's not scripted, right? It's clearly, and again, I would say you would expect this from a podcast. It's not rehearsed. It's not put together in the way that the John Oliver episode is, right? But as a result of that, unless you take like a, you know, halfway decent notes, it can be hard sometimes to track everything that goes on or what happens or when it happens, right? You may remember some things that, that either one of these guys says, but then you got to go find it, right? You know, like, was it before this or after that, right? So um, my first bit of advice would be if you end up writing about this episode, first of all, when it comes to citations, uh, and I'll just show you right here. this very low tech this is not worth getting the computer out check it right there that's what the citations would look like you guys get silly sometimes these by the way in case it's not clear you guys get kind of silly sometimes you give me like timestamps, things like that we don't need that no one needs that i don't maybe there's another like apa some other format that wants timestamps, mla no we don't mess with any of that give me the last name <sighs> you're good anyway <clears throat> When it comes to your notes though, to help you out, I would actually encourage you to, to give yourself some timestamps. So you can go back, you can watch a minute or two of it again, and you can find it immediately. That's just gonna, that's gonna help you out. Um, okay, now I'll actually talk about that's uh, that, That's all the uh, front matter I wanted to talk about. The way I like to think about the Rogan and Pacman episode, um, again, it's you know 30 minutes plus what I have you guys watch. You can more or less break it into two halves, okay? The first half is all about really what got David Pakman on the show at all, at all. And this is what Rogan says is a couple years ago, um, David Pakman, they, they walk you through the particulars, but he said a thing to a person on Twitter, basically. And they go through all that. And that person tried to get him fired. <laughs> um, especially when, when taking into account what it is he said you know, like, this person, like, tried to get him fired for that. Like, that is notable. And that's the first half. The conversation they have about that, you know, is basically the first half of the episode. The second half of the episode, uh, you could say they almost use that as a kind of springboard, right, to talk about uh, social media more generally. Uh, they get into YouTube specifically uh, because they're both on YouTube at the time. Uh, and because, and this is weird sometimes for students to think about, but it is, YouTube is, uh, it, it counts as social media as well. Um, in some ways, I mean, again, I know it's not like Twitter, it's not like Facebook or Instagram or any of these other things. Um, YouTube is older than all those, actually. So 
in a lot of the ways that you know Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, apps and sites like these are built, a lot of the ways that they work uh, stems from the way YouTube has always worked. Um, and I'm not trying to hate on anybody. I mean, I do think it's weird to comment on YouTube videos and and get invested in that and like have to, huge discussions or arguments in YouTube comments. But people do it. A lot of people do it. Um, and so it operates very similarly to, to social media, actually. Why do I bring all that up? Well, again, this is the second half of the episode we watched. Um, the points they're making, and I, I like it because, and again, this is very different from the John Oliver video. This would not be a fair expectation to have of him. But the cool thing that we we have on offer in the, in the podcast format is you have two people having a conversation and they don't agree on everything, but you get to watch in real time. First of all, uh, again, however you may feel about either, either one of these people, if you've heard about either one of them, uh, like they're both on the left end of the spectrum politically, but Pacman's probably to the left of Rogan. Um, they agree on some things, but they disagree on a lot, at least a lot of the things they're talking about in this, uh, in this clip. Um, but they're respectful about it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and that allows us to just watch, you know, Pacman make a point, Rogan make a point or question something or like, you know, well, what about this? And then Pacman comes back and they, they debate, but in a very respectful manner that I think actually by the end, they kind of agree with each other, which is wild. Unfortunately, it's a wild thing here in 2022 to watch two adults agree on something uh, that they originally disagreed about. But, but again, other than that stupid joke I just made, what I want you to appreciate here. And something you could think about, again, when it comes to critique, not just the arguments these people are making, right? That's kind of where we start, but how they're being made and whether or not you think they're successful in the making of that argument as a text. All right, so give me one second. I got to deal with head stuff and then I'll tell you what I mean by that. All right, sorry, still cold stuff. So what am I talking about? Well, the best example I could think of, and there's quite a few actually in the in the video, right at the end of the uh, of the assigned clip, right? So uh, a little over an hour into the episode, because there's only five minutes left that we watch after that. Um, they're talking about uh, YouTube and of course social, social media more generally. And they're talking about like censorship and, and how it should be applied. And this is still to this day, sort of a political discussion that's going on. And, you know, as soon as we start talking about politics, I'm sure most of you tune out, which I get you know, if you're 18, 19, I, I wouldn't care either. But this particular discussion uh, pertains to you guys because it, it's, it's going to determine how social media works, right? And it absolutely pertains to these two people in the episode because they're on social media. It's a big um, sort of source of their income, right? So it's their livelihoods they're talking about. So they care. <clears throat> but they're having this discussion and uh rogan you know a, a couple times disagrees with pacman uh tries to give different examples make different points um and i guess what i want to the way i want to try to explain this to you when it comes to critiquing um this podcast okay there's kind of two distinct ways to do it either you can look at specific points that either one of these guys makes, okay? That's one thing to think about, and we'll talk about that in a second. Or you can think about, and I wanna want put this just right, or you can think about the episode as a complete text, okay, that both guys are making together, and what arguments does that complete text make? So here's what, I wanna explain that first. Again, both of these guys agree in some ways, but disagree in some others, and they're pretty upfront about that, right? As a text that they, they make together, because this podcast episode would not exist without both of these guys, right? What points do they come to? What, what ideas do they sort of bring up together? I mean, a few. Uh, one of them being, for one of the big points that Rogan... Uh, I think initially agrees with Pacman, and then he uh, becomes like even more convinced uh, is the way I would describe it. Um, they're having their discussion of, of censorship on YouTube specifically. And 
uh, Rogan makes the point that you'll hear sometimes that a lot of these companies lean left, things like that. And Pacman, uh, if you go back and watch that clip, he's very quick uh, to be like, why do you say that? Like he, um, you can tell, I would argue, you can tell he's heard this before. And on that is a pretty common thing that you'll hear in some circles um, that, that a given company leans right or left. And invariably, just like Rogan points out, uh, it'll usually come down to, well, the people in charge lean that way, so therefore the company does. And Pacman makes the, again, I think pretty great point that, you know, people can lead a company, but it's a company. Like, the company only cares about making money. Like, that that's their political leaning. What's going to make me money? Um, he, and he says that about YouTube. And again, to Rogan's credit, he immediately agrees with him. He's like, ah, that's, that's a good point, actually. So, so what happens there? How would we break that down yeah, rhetorically, but then also how would we critique it? To begin with, <clears throat> again, if we're going to talk about it as a text, what argument are they making here? Well, we have two options, actually. The first option is the one I just sort of detailed for you, which is, you know, what I'm going to call this narrative. Uh, I almost said myth. I don't think, I think that's too strong, but like this narrative that you'll run into a lot that certain companies are politically aligned, politically biased. You guys hear that word all the time. That That's a fun word that gets thrown around a lot that I don't know if people know exactly what that means. Um, just as an English person, that, that bugs me that people use words incorrectly. But anyway, anyway, <clears throat> moving away from that. Um, they take this narrative on together. Joe Rogan represents the side that's like, I think that narrative's a thing. Uh, David Packman represents the side that's like, mm, no. Um, and in the space of, I don't even think it's five minutes, um, they both come to the conclusion where like, I, th I want to say that's the part where Joe Rogan says something like, I, I, I agree with you like to a certain extent. Like he like slips it in real quick because they're trying to talk about something else because again, it's a podcast. But he just says, like, I'm with you. Like, I feel you on that, basically. That's a big moment. Again, I, I can't stress this enough. You watch two adults agree on something that involve politics. It's bananas. But anyway, <clears throat> rhetorically, how does that work? Let's think about some of the details. Um, and I've, I've pointed them out already, but I want to lay them out for you here. If you were to talk about this moment, you could, and in this particular moment, probably should, quote, one or two things these guys say. And I say it like that because it actually kind of depends upon how you're going to end up talking about it. Uh, for instance, I could see a way to talk about this moment without quoting them at all. But if you're going to quote them, because uh, that's what a lot of you will do, because that's what you're used to doing, how would you do it? Well, uh, you, to me, because what the, the aspect I'm most interested in in this section is the fact that they disagree, but then come to an understanding. Like that's the most just mind blowing part of this episode to me. They do that a couple times, but in this particular, like this is one of those moments, and it's kind of wild because they're just so damn nice about it, right? They're so polite to each other. I want to talk about that too, by the way, but that in a second. So you could, for instance. Uh, quote Joe Rogan saying something like, you know, uh, he gives her name, but like the lady in charge of YouTube, blah, 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 gave money or what, you know, whatever he says about, I'm using my memory here because it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter in this case, but he says that and it's very quick. You, you can almost paraphrase it too. Like I just did actually, I don't know that the quotation matters. And then Pacman makes his point about how just cause you have people running companies doesn't mean they run the entire company uh, politically, ideologically, right? Like the company can be different from people. And again, I just paraphrase Pacman because I don't think their quotations matter much here. Their ideas do because that's what we're thinking about. Rhetorically, what you could then do if you paraphrased all that quickly, by the way, if you paraphrased all that, you could get into a discussion about how, well, look, the thing I keep coming back to, the number one detail I'm most interested in, blown away by, is how damn respectful they are to each other. They let each other talk. They occasionally, uh, I would argue, accidentally sort of interrupt each other, but then they stop. Like, again, any of these details you could really dig into and say they are mindful of each other and what the other person, they're actually, you get the sense they actually hear each other. 
And again, unfortunately, I don't know that that happens all the time, this day and age, right? But you really get the sense that they're trying to hear each other. They're trying to convince each other, obviously. That's what people do um, with whatever points they have, whatever they think about a thing. But you really get the sense that Rogan will make a point, Pacman will make a point, and they're both listening to the other guy. What does that do rhetorically? Let's stay there for just a second. This, this polite exchange, this respectful exchange. Well, rhetorically, I would argue, um, first of all, it's just refreshing to see people do that. Uh, again, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm halfway joking, but I'm, I'm, eat, eat, I don't even know if it would go halfway. Like, more and more these days, I don't know that you encounter that very often. Um, so I think it's just, it's just cool. It's, um, I wouldn't go so far as to call it entertaining, right? But, but I think refreshing is the best word I can come up with. Like, it's just nice to see people talking to each other and not screaming, you know, and actually hearing each other. How do we critique that? Well, I mean, I, I would think it's clear at this point. I think it's a positive when it comes to the argument that the text is making. More on that in a second. But how so? Well, I would argue in my critique that by being respectful of one another, by clearly listening to one another, letting uh, each person talk, uh, res very clearly responding in detail to what the other person said, which also tells you they're listening to each other. By doing all that, I would argue uh, for the audience that that kind of, that encourages the audience to do the same thing, right? And again, I don't know this is something that we always do, um, but in this particular case, if I were critiquing this part of their exchange, this element of their exchange, I think it's a positive. I think it encourages us to listen to each of these guys too, even if we happen to disagree with one or two things that either one of these guys says, uh, which is entirely possible. But it encourages us to sort of pay them the same favor they're paying each other, to be respectful as listeners. What argument are they making then? <clears throat> well, if we're going to talk about it like that, that is, first of all, an argument. I don't know if you realize this, but if you break uh, rhetoric down to its constituent parts, at its base, uh, even right now, I'm, I'm arguing to you that you should listen to me rhetorically. Um, and I have hurdles I have to climb with my um, lingering cold and, and whatnot. Um, the fact that I'm filming this in a child's room, in a child's chair, I'm very low to the ground. Um, things like that. But I'm still arguing to you that I'm worth listening to, that, that I have valid points, what have you. That's at the base of all rhetoric um, in some way, shape, or form. And if you get one step higher than that, in this particular case, in the Rogan episode, one argument they're making here is that, that as an audience member, you should hear both of these guys. Um, because you probably, because we all do, lean a little more toward one or the other because they, they have different ideas and you're going to like one of those ideas more than the other. But you should hear both. Um, that's an argument that the text is making inherently right there. If you want to be a little more overt about it, I mean, the argument that they're actually having, which is uh, whether or not companies are politically motivated or whether it really just comes down to money, um, you could talk about how being respectful of one another perhaps lends itself, again, I'm still thinking it's a positive, but lends itself to, um, how would you spend that? Sort of encouraging the audience to come to their own conclusion, I guess, based on the information they offer. Does that make sense? Like, to put that another way, in the moment that we're talking about, but really in the, in the whole episode, I don't know that you could make the case that they are out and out trying to sell you on an idea. Like they're making their points, but again, because it's a conversation, because it's informal, it's not planned, it's not rehearsed, they're just figuring it out as they go. You never get the sense, and this may be even a, a separate body paragraph, but you never get the sense that they are uh, trying to sell you on something, trying to spend something. They're just trying to figure it out too. Um, you could even argue it almost, it feels more inclusive. 
I mean, think of this. Um, and by the way, just to be clear, in your papers, you should not write about both texts, okay? I'm doing this for the sake of an example. But one of the kind of inherent difficulties of traditional media, which is what John Oliver is, is... <clears throat> Sorry. Is that it's one-sided, right? It's like this. Now, interestingly, so is a podcast, right? You can't speak back to a podcast. But if you think about the tone um, of the presentation, I keep saying... Oliver's is more formal. It's clearly rehearsed and scripted. And by the way, as it should be, like it's on HBO. They're paying him a ton of money. Like they're like, you need to rehearse some stuff, dog. But but it it feels as an audience member, you're you're at a remove, if that makes sense. Like you're you're a little more separate from what's being discussed. Okay. Whereas I think you could argue in a podcast, especially with like two people. Sometimes podcast is one guy, but if it's two people talking just having a conversation, it can feel sometimes, I think, like you're in the conversation. You're not talking to them, but you're just sitting there listening. You feel closer to it, right? And that, that's how I came to the term uh, inclusive. You feel like you're included even though, you know, you're not. But it, but it feels more like that, um, just via the medium of podcasts, right? That could be uh, an element to talk about. That could be a body paragraph where you think about what does it do rhetorically to feel included? Um, obviously, I think you would lean more toward that being a, a positive critique to feel included. However, uh, as with most arguments, that there are drawbacks to some of that. <clears throat> For instance, um, and again, I'm, I'm sighing because I can't breathe through my nose, but... In the Rogan and Pac-Man episode, it could feel like a lot. And I mean that in kind of two ways. But to, to first talk about the point I was just making with being inclusive, it's possible that in the space of that half hour, you feel too close to the information, which is to say it can be hard at times, and this can happen to anybody, it can be hard at times to follow everything, to especially like after you listen to it or watch it or whatever to remember a lot of things, you know, you, hopefully you have some things you've held onto. Hopefully you have some notes, but apart from that, just in your own mind, like you could, you're like, well, I know I listened to it and I kind of remember what each guy said, but at the same time, because uh, it's a lot, it's really fast and you're really close to it. So it kind of, if you pardon the metaphor, speeds right by you in some ways you could argue. That's a bit of a negative critique, right? Happens. Conversely, and by the way, this is why traditional media is built the way that it is. Um, at least it's one of the reasons. I think you could also argue, John Oliver, uh, in his video, the remove that you're at as an audience member, the space between you and the text that exists, makes it a little easier to digest the information, right? It's a little easier to follow uh, it's a little easier to hang on to information, to, to recall things. And I, I would attribute that uh, to a couple uh, uh, aspects of the text. But one of them is that, that remove that we're at as an audience. Okay. So that's worth thinking about. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you one more idea. I'm trying, I'm trying, I mean, you guys, uh, I know, I know it's not fun to watch videos. Okay. I mean, this is a replacement for class. So there's that. I do work hard to make these shorter than class would be, just to put that out there. But I got one more, um, I suppose, example I want to give you. Because this week, we're watching both texts. We're thinking about both texts. I mainly just want to do my best to help you appreciate the menu you have in front of you. Whatever text you pick, whether it's John Oliver or Rogan and Pacman, again, choose one. Whichever one you roll with, I want you to probably go ahead and watch it again after you watch the video, because I think watching it twice is almost always a good idea. But I want you more aware that second time around of all the possibilities you have in front of you. Because um, it's a lot, actually. <clears throat> For instance, in Rogan and Pacman, <clears throat> you could quote them. You could talk about the tone. You could talk about the informality just of the whole podcast setup, you know, Different things like this that we've discussed already. 
There are other um, details on the table, though. For instance, uh, I mentioned it before, but I, I didn't talk about it very much. The way these guys are dressed. Um, Pacman is basically business casual, I guess. Um, and Rogan is casual. Um, what does that do? Right? First of all, again, just to remind you, we have to appreciate the text for what it is, which is to say it's a podcast. So it would not be fair <clears throat> to, to say something like, you know, they should be more dressed up or whatever. That's silly. Um, but what does that mode of dress, since it doesn't violate the expectations we have when it comes to a podcast, a YouTube video, um, does it offer anything rhetorically? Well, I think it can. And again, there's always different ways to talk about it. Uh, the one that's uh, most apparent to me, again, uh, it comes down to this question of inclusivity, of sort of lack of space. Uh, between us, uh, between the audience and the and the guys talking, because they look like they do. Do you know what I mean? Because they just look like people. Um, in this case, I would argue uh, it's a little bit different from from our earlier conversation about inclusivity. But basically, if I were to talk about this rhetorically, I get the sense that this is a conversation I could have. Do you know what I mean? Like, again, to compare it to John Oliver, the way he's dressed. He's behind that big desk. He's in front of an audience. Those are three things I don't have, right? Um, and even if I agree with some of the things he says, it feels more like I'm being convinced as opposed to that, that as opposed to something I could participate in. Do you see what I'm saying? In this case, this is just two guys in a room, and they have microphones, but hell, if you really want a microphone, you can go get one. I got one downstairs, you know, like, I mean, it, it can be had, um, and that's really it, so it's just more, it's more available as a discussion, and what I mean by that is, it's something, I used the word inclusive before, I think here, you could be a little more specific and say, like, you're invited in, in a way, um, to hear them, because again, you can't talk back, although maybe that's the new technology here in 10 or 15 years, but, um, but you're, it, it feels like you're invited into the room. Um, it doesn't feel like you, you don't belong again, just as a, as a result of the way that they're dressed. And I know that's maybe sounds a little too nitpicky, a little too detailed, but these are things you can consider, um, on the flip side. This may be a little harder to see in the clip I assigned you, actually. Um, I don't remember if there's any, like, wider shots. There, there's actually three or four angles they'll take in these episodes. Like, obviously, you see each person, right? Uh, Rogan and Pacman. It cuts back and forth when they're talking. But there's also a wide shot uh, at times of the table they're sitting at. And you can kind of see it when it shows either guy. But the space they're in... Um, I've had students before describe it as a bro cave. Um, you may be familiar with the term man cave. Bro cave would be an offshoot of that. Um, but it's just like, first of all, it's a lot of crap. It's a lot of crap. And I use that word purposefully. Like it's, uh, I mean, some of it is probably pretty cool, you know, because it's mostly like guests will bring him stuff. And like, it's almost always famous people with like cool stuff. So like, fine. But it's all, it's just a lot of crap just everywhere, all over the table, all over like shelves and just everywhere. Um, and the vibe of the room is sort of unequivocally, uh, unequivocally bro cave. Like it's, I think it's actually a great description. Um, but what about that? Well, first of all, you'd have to be able to, you'd have to be able to point to some details. And again, that could be difficult in some of the shots that we get um in this 30 minutes i think it could be done but but basically what we're talking we're talking about setting now okay <clears throat> i just talked to you probably for about 15 or so minutes about all the ways this podcast can feel inviting inclusive i think those are true right if you wanted to again in the same way we talked about last week tonight last time 
if you wanted to provide a bit of a counterpoint though, uh, to feel like a more measured critique, um, a, a, an available counterpoint would be, well, it is super inclusive, it's super inviting, it makes people feel like they're kind of in the room even though they're not type of thing. I mean, you also get the sense that not everyone would be as comfortable in that room as everyone else, right? That's a fair critique. Now look, what you can't do, because some people will misunderstand this, what you cannot do, hang on, <clears throat> is try to say like, that that's clearly on purpose, basically, right? Because it isn't. I mean, in some ways, like it is just a podcast studio. This is basically like Joe Rogan's room, you know, it'd be the same thing if it, your bedroom or whatever, if you've spent any time decorating it, if you look around, you're like, well, if I'm being fair, really only certain people would be super comfortable in here, me chief among them, right? Because it's my room. But I can see where other people would walk in here and like, maybe not want to hang out very long. You wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair to argue that you're trying to exclude those people. They're just different from you. Do you see my point? So you couldn't take that tack. But what you could do is say, again, as a bit of a counterpoint to the inclusivity, while, oh, there's a cat trapped in here. I'm going to help him out. Ugh. Anyway. <clears throat> while, um, sorry, I just saw his shadow. It was really distracting. While uh, the, the tone, the mode of dress, um, even just the structure of their conversation can feel inclusive, right? Inviting. Those, those, those terms I gave you, I think those are true, right? That might be a body paragraph. On the other hand, um, the room itself, all the knickknacks, the, uh, and I hate to use this term because it is a pejorative, um, but I, I have bro tendencies in me too. You know, I'm a white male that plays video games. Like, I mean, I, I got some of that kicking around. I love football, things like this. Um, there's probably a better term for it, but the room does have like a distinctly bro vibe, right? And in that way, uh, again, well, you could, you could argue certain people would feel even more included still, even more invited still. <clears throat> However, not everyone would. And, and in some cases, people might even find it uncomfortable. Um, and so they're distanced uh, a little bit as a result of that setting, right? To be clear, and I'm almost done, I promise, but to be clear, you're not saying uh, Joe Rogan is like throwing a middle finger up at people because he designs a room the way that he wants. Like, that's insane. Don't be that guy, okay? You're just reading the text, what the text gives you, you're picking out details and you're, and you're thinking about how does this affect an audience rhetorically? Once you do that, then you can apply your critique. Is it, does this, how does this impact their argument? Uh, does it make it more successful, less successful? Is it somewhere in between and why? And if you can answer that, why you have an argument, okay? Whichever text you end up rolling with, that's how you got to build this thing. Um, I want to end this by saying, I, I reminded you last time, but you still have the, the three potential signs and elements due on course then. That's all I've done this week with each text is just trying. And, and I should say too, there's much more in either one of these things in terms of details you could pick out, but a sign or an element just to remind you, or if you didn't watch the previous video is just one specific detail from the text. So as a callback to today, one sign or element <clears throat> I would almost certainly write about is the just super respectful way these guys talk to each other. At no point do they get heated or are they, are they jerks to each other, even though, again, it's very clear they don't agree on some stuff, but they're trying to hear each other out. And, and again, I use that verb purposely. I think they're actually putting in effort to hear each other because it's not always easy to do. That's an interesting detail. So if I were if I were doing the homework, that might be one I would pick. And I would talk about that a little bit. I would try to think about how does the fact that they actually try to hear each other impact uh, 
the success of the argument in the text, right? And you can talk about that a little bit. You do that two more times, that's your homework. Uh, again, you want to pick one of the texts. I would rather you didn't write about both because we want to start building toward the papers here. But yeah, I hope that makes sense. Uh, obviously, we'll keep talking about these next week. Um, let me know if you have any questions, as always. Otherwise, I'll see you then. Thank you.